Uh, so there are far too many TV stations out there and they all need to be noticed. Now, the NBC version that streams in the UK is called Peacock, which is very appropriate when we tell you what the the next show is yeah, all about. There's a bit of peacocking going on. Uh, plans for a new show set to rival Channel 4's Naked Attraction and this will have contestants having sex in the dark. Fornicating. Well, that's, that's just an old-fashioned term, isn't it? Sex before marriage. Fornication. Fornication goes on and it's called sex in the dark. Right, so you switch the lights off and then they get at it, right? Fornication. Mm. That's it's what just it is. weird. It's just so weird. Is there nothing better that we can put Temptation on our television? Temptation of the flesh. Has society become too obsessed with sex? Let's speak to dating and relationships expert Kate Mansfield. What's your view about all of this? Well, I think this is actually an all-time low in terms of where we're going in the media with the desensitisation of sex and the way it's portrayed. I mean, for me, this is basically a family sitting round together watching porn. I mean, how is it any different? There's people in the dark, having sex with each other, trying to figure out if they're a match. I mean, it's just actually unbelievable to me. And where are we in society if the only way you can decide if someone's a match for you is what they're like in the sack? Like, that's what, what percentage well, of a, a relationship... Well, it's a pretty good starting point. Well, no, of course it is. But if anyone thinks that's the only basis of a relationship, then that's where we're all going wrong. Absolutely. And actually, I don't agree that it's a good starting point. I think that's the whole problem with most relationships. I think that a starting point should be emotional connection, trust, building friendship, okay. getting to it's know It's a somebody. pretty good secondary point then. It is important. I'm not saying it's not. But I think the whole problem with relationships, and, and my clients come to me so confused. I think we are in a huge crisis in the whole world of dating and relationships because of this issue. And I think that the media is largely responsible because of these kind of shows. Um, there's a theory that there's this writer's strike going on in, in L.A. at the moment. Mm. And essentially, this is the most brainless television that they can put out there because none of the people with brains are, are working at the moment. So they're like, I know what, let's just strip people naked and get them to behave like animals. I mean, it's that base, as far as I can tell. Yeah, I think so. It's a cheap shot. That's scrabbling around for content, but I think that there's still no excuse. I'm sure they could have found something better than this that actually is positive and, and teaching people how to have, you know, healthy relationships. I mean, what are we teaching our young people? I think ultimately, I think, you know, we're going towards a place where using sex and love almost like a drug is becoming the norm when we look at social media and young people as well. And I think we need to really start taking this seriously because I think we're headed mm. for a huge crisis, actually. In Kate, Kate, doesn't it um, stigmatise the contestants, the people who take part in this, that they're judged on the basis that they haven't seen each other, they have touched each other and felt each other, and then they can have intercourse with each other, and then we will know who those contestants are. Yeah, I mean, I feel sorry for them. You know, a lot of people go on TV wanting a moment of fame, and I think a lot of these people on this show are actually going to live to regret it, taking part in this. I mean, I think you're kind of putting yourself up for a lot of abuse and a lot of judgment and, and stigma. Um, yeah, I just think it's, <laughs> I think it's a terrible idea, the whole thing. Would you do it, Isabel? I don't think I even want to dignify that Which, question well, I mean, with an answer. I what mean, do you think? Well, if they had a celebrity version. I'm A, and married, they... and even if I wasn't, not a chance in hell will stop. Well, if they paid me enough, like, I mean, I, might, I mean, but, you know, I mean, there, there could be worse things to do. I do get, I do get... Do the you, are you serious? I mean, let's just break that down for a minute. If they paid you enough, you would take your clobber off and have sex in the dark and have someone assess you it would give, and decide whether or not... It would give too many people too oh, many a lot of cheap pressure. thrills. <laughs> no, no pressure. <laughs> um, but no, no, looking at it, and it's just like, as Isabel was saying earlier, it's like watching two dogs in a sack or something or cats in a bag or something. It's, um, it is as low as it goes, really. I think so. I think yeah. absolutely. And I think we need to be really thinking more carefully about what we're portraying in the media in terms right. of what a relationship should look like, what's involved in making those decisions. Playing devil's advocate, what about those people who would say, you know, it's liberating, that actually sexual compatibility is a really interesting side to our humanity, um, that we need to try and, you know, experiment and understand our sexuality more? I think that those things might be true, but I think if we're looking at actually how to build a functioning society with families and people who are in deeply connected emotional relationships that are going to sustain over time, 
I think this is something very different. Yeah. I'm sorry, I just don't think that this is relevant to that. And I, I wonder think... how they get through Ofcom, to be honest. I presume it's after the watershed and all the rest of no, it. No, Ofcom are more interested if, you know, if I say... Something some, about Meghan Markle. <laughs> something about Meghan Markle or um, you use a, a, a term... I'd love to say the, the swear... I mean, I like swear words. I think swear words are quite good. But, you know, the idea that you, in this day and age there's certain things you can't say, you know, this would have got you detention at school, and that, you know, people will be shocked by you saying certain words, like, you know, the sort of words you use all day. Well, in private. In private. <laughs> in private. But, um, yeah, but, I mean, that, that's the hypocrisy yeah. of all of this. But, Kate, I nonsense. think you made the point, you know, it's like watching porn with your family. If you want to watch porn, just go and watch porn. We don't have to be putting it on normal family access televisions where children can stumble upon it. Absolutely. I mean, I think we're just giving children and young people the message that sex is all that matters. And, you know, it's we are facing a crisis in, in dating and relationships. I'm seeing it on the ground level with people who come to me um, who've had their lives actually devastated because of these kind of things where they're just absolutely unable to connect emotionally. They don't understand what a relationship involves. They don't understand how to communicate. And I think we're just putting out a message that sex is all that matters. Yeah. And it's just not true. It's, it's this really idea not. that you've got nothing to contribute to a relationship apart from your, your body. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Just so backward. Absolutely. And I think what we're missing is teaching people how to connect you know, over time, how to build trust. And actually, even the show Love is Blind, you could argue, oh, they're creating an emotional connection first. I don't think that's true either because they don't actually know each other. So no. it's a very strange concept mm. to think that you're getting to know the real person. You, you can't get to know the real person behind a wall yeah. or just in the dark through, you know, having sex. Yeah, it's but it'll be billed as an amazing scientific experiment, you know, social and scientific mm. experiment. Well, you know, uh, one of my guilty pleasures is watching Married at First Sight Australia. Mm. Yeah. And I actually object to the concept because I do think it does cheapen marriage because mm. the vast majority of them don't remain married, like 90 but it is an interesting concept in itself because they have these scientists that come up with sort of compatibility and do all the tests and put people together. And I, I think that's quite an interesting idea, but perhaps the marriage bit isn't necessary in there. Have either of you got views well, on maths? So I think, yeah, I mean, again, I think it's insane for two people to get married mm -hmm. in such a short space of yeah. time. Whether they've met, whether they're in a box, whether they're behind a wall, whether they're in the dark having sex. Yeah. I mean, I think what we're missing is that actually, you know, the decision to get married or even get into a committed relationship should be based on the reality of who that person is. And I think that's the thing that we're missing most of us in our dating lives and in our, you know, the process that we go through in order to get into a relationship. Thanks, Kate. Thanks for your take Thank on you. things. That's Kate Mansfield there. So from married at first sight to um, rumpy bumpy at first sight. Watch, it's not even first sight because they're in the dark. Yeah, you don't exactly. see anything. It's the first touch. Ugh.